Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to the Heal Your Heart, Find True Love After Toxic Love and Be Happier Now virtual conference. And today we're talking to my good friend, Wendy Newman. I'm so excited for you to hear her message of don't heal your heart alone. This is going to be great. So Wendy is a media celebrated author and dating, sex, and relationship expert who's led hundreds of workshops and revolutionized the lives of over 70,000, wow, plus women internationally. She is compassion. She is a compassionate fellow dater who navigated through 121 first dates. I have your book and <laughs> met her mate, Dave. I'm so excited for you to hear Wendy's message of don't heal your heart alone. I am your host, Denise Kavaluskas, and it's my mission to heal your heart and find true love just like I did. I too was in a very toxic relationship for over 20 years and found true love after toxic love. And so my, my motto is if I did it, you can too. And what lights me up is seeing you heal your heart and find true love after toxic love. And this conference was created with you in mind and that's why I have these special hand-picked experts that know exactly what you've been through and have the tools to guide you through your time of need. Wendy, I'm honored to have you as an expert on this panel, and I'm ready to dive in and talk about how to not heal your heart alone. Hi, Denise. Thank you for having me back. I love hanging out with you, so it's really good to be here. Yeah, it's always a good time. And I heard the talk title, not the talk title, the the summit title, and I thought, healing your heart from talk. Mm -hmm, yep, it, we're, I, we're, I'm, a, I'm a woman. You're a woman. The people watching are probably mostly women. We've all been there before, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I thought of the perfect thing to do for me, which is to, sh to demonstrate for you, to show you a method that is so ridiculously easy, you won't even think it could work. But it's that easy, you're like, ah. And I just wanna, if it's okay, share the background of how I found out about it, and what my experience was, and then we'll dive in and I'll demo it for you. Absolutely. So you oh, great, thanks. So then you can see uh, if you're watching this video, you might even, take some borrowing benefits away and heal your heart from the participation that Denise and I are going to do together in this practice. It's a practice, but it's not really a practice. It's an actual demonstration. So here's the thing. I heard about this method from my very good friend, Alison Armstrong, and she, I don't know where she got it, um, but I know that it goes back as far as like the nonviolent communication people use a version of this. And what I'm about to show you is my version of this. I stripped it way, 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 way down. So what I'm about to demonstrate, you might have seen in another place. It's been around for a long time and probably a lot of people use it. But I, I really wanted to make it as simple, simple, simple as possible. So if you have seen it before, you'll be like, oh, she's missing all of these steps. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have stripped away the 9,000 steps that some people use to get this done. Because what I'm about to show you is we can carry pain, but if we're willing and we're willing to noodle around in it with somebody who cares about us, we can release it. And you'll think, but no, I've been carrying this pain for 22 years. It's, it's impossible to release something in five minutes that I've carried for 22 years. If, if you say so, I mean, words cast spells. If you want to be right about that, you can be right about that. Mm -hmm. Or you can decide to be willing as in will yourself to take a moment to see if you can either disappear the pain or severely reduce the impact and pain that it has on your heart and on your life. Yeah. yeah? I okay. love what you said, Wendy. Words cast spells. I'm going to use that one. That's genius. <laughs> Yeah, we use it around our house all the time. It's like, really, that's what you're going to be saying out loud to the universe? <laughs> okay, that's what you want. 
Totally. It's such it, the huge part of this is self-awareness. Like, what are you thinking? What are you saying? What do you believe? Yeah. And I'm excited to do this. Yeah. Okay, good. So what you do, people at home watching, is you grab a friend, grab a buddy. Now, this buddy has to be someone who likes you, who doesn't have an agenda or an axe to grind or is going to be weird with you or passive aggressive or no, no, not like your sister who you don't have a great relationship with. No. Right. I mean, it can even be a stranger who you have affinity with, like even a new kind of new friend that just like each other. You know, they, what they need to have is a willingness to facilitate and in the facilitation, they're doing two things, three things. They're holding space, right? They're listening, like listening, and they're tapping into their own empathy. Like in other words, I'm gonna ask Denise to be the participant. She's gonna play the role of participant to be healed. I'm going to play the role of hold the space healer. But the real secret in all of this is I'm not the healer. Denise is the healer. We only can heal our own pain, right? So the secret is she's really both the healer and the healee, but I'm going to play the role of healer just to hold the space for her to do this very simple process, okay? And what I'm going to ask of Denise is, are you willing, as in, Will you, you be able to will, will yourself? Are you willing or interested in? Are you willing to heal your heart? Yes. Okay, good. So Denise has kindly volunteered and she's going to pony up for me <laughs> something real in her life where her heart isn't fully healed, that there's still pain there. And what I'm going to ask Denise to do is to tell me who is it? Now, this isn't a general, uh, the world is unfair, or I do too much of this, or no, this is like, you want to think you're four years old, right? <laughs> that person did that to me. And, Specific. Right. And I know that pretty much everybody watching is super accountable. Like you're cerebral and you're accountable and you know you create your own life and circumstances and you have cause in the matter of what happened. And I, I know that you are accountable and the adult in you can see your own part in what happened. Set that aside. Set adult side of you aside. There's plenty of time for brain later. We want to get to the heart and the heart is about four years old. You hurt me, right? So we're going to get, we're, don't worry about accountability. There's no accountability here. <laughs> There's no like who was really right and wrong justification. No, no, no. This is like, we're trying to dig in here, get to the four-year-old heart, bypass the brain, get to the heart, boop, right? And we'll get healing. So you're willing. That's good job. If you will, tell me his name. And in a sentence or two, not the whole 20 year history, but in a sentence or two, how did he hurt you? How did he, you can use hurt, disrespected, any of the disses, dishonored, abandoned, at like whatever it is. Who is he? How did he hurt you? And once you say that, I'm gonna ask you questions and I'm gonna, basically what I'm gonna do I'm going to say I'm, I'm real. I'm going to take it to heart. I'm going to say I'm really sorry for what happened, but I'm going to mean it. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say the words as close as I can back to you. And I might do a little intuitive stuff as we go, ask a few questions, but it's as simple as just repeating back. Okay. You ready? Yep. Denise, who was he and how did he hurt you? His name is Tony. And he hurt me by using me for 22 years, um, disrespecting me, um, and thinking I was a fool that I, yeah, used me, disrespected me, and thinking I was a fool. 
when he did or didn't do what? When he lied, cheated. Yeah, those are the big ones. Lied, cheated, chose drugs over his family, i.e. myself and our two children. Yeah, that's a big one. Yeah. You'll notice I'm writing. This is okay, people. You can write. And what I wrote down were key, keywords that she used. Okay. Take everybody, take a breath. This is terrible for video, just blank air, right? Just take another breath. Denise, I am so sorry that Tony spent years of your life using you, making you feel like a fool. He lied, he disrespected you, and by the end of it, you felt used. You chose drugs over your family. I'm so sorry that he made you feel foolish and used for everything that you gave him. Your life, your precious time, and your heart. He completely disrespected you, and I am so sorry. Take another breath. Now, as I was talking, there might have been more that came up for you. Like, oh yeah, and he also, uh, no, I was actually in gratitude, thanking you for acknowledging all of that crap, 22 years of that crap. I mean, obviously that's just the, the, the surface of what happened, but I was feeling grateful for somebody actually, I, I've never heard those words before. So I was in gratitude. Yeah. Nothing else really came up. Yeah. And, and so for some, when you do this process, one round might be enough. And then for other situations, you want to think of it like a ball of yarn. Like we pulled one thread, then mm -hmm. what? And then the other thing he did, and then that one specific thing he did. And then that reminded you of your father who walked away when you were four, and then, right? And then you just, you can keep going round after round, or it might just take one round. Now this seems simple, and I have a little confession to make which is when I heard about this process and I saw this process demonstrated to me live, I was like, meh, <laughs> it's too simple. Too I mean, easy. I don't know. Yeah, too easy. I don't know about you, but I, for a long time, did life the really hard way. <laughs> I mean, come on, 121 first dates to get to my, <laughs> that's yeah. hard, right? Yeah. So I'm like, ah, that's too easy. That'll never work. And finally, what happened was after I had been on about 120, it was about 120 dates, first dates with 120 different men. And I just felt so weighty, like I was carrying 120 men on my back as I was going into the next date, right? It was wow. just brutal. And I finally just called uncle. I was like, fine, it seems simple, but fine, fine, I'll, I'll do it. I'll just, I'll try it out. And I, I'm like, I'm just gonna do it on something small. Well, the small thing was small because it wasn't a long period of time, but first date number 60, we only dated for three months, but he really surprised me. He really broke my heart. I didn't see it coming. And for some stupid reason, I held on to that pain for nearly two years. It was a three month relationship, two years. And I did this process and the next day I'm like looking in my body, it's just gone. Like it's gone. The heaviness. Yeah. The heaviness, the pain, the sadness, the, this was unfair. Mm -hmm. Why did this happen to me? Gone. Like mm -hmm. it never returned. And it might be a coincidence. I'm pretty sure it was a coincidence, but I did meet Dave the next week. So so here's my question, Wendy. I'm thinking 
from the audience's perspective in the beginning when you said they have to choose somebody to to do the the part that you played right um yeah. and coming from a place of compassion and empathy because not everybody has that ability truth um what advice could you give to them on how to choose the best person for this or if they do choose somebody where they're not feeling it because I really felt it from you. I really felt the energy of, I'm really sorry you, you lived the shit show for 22 years. If they go through this process and they're not feeling the compassion and empathy from the other person, what, what can they do? Yeah. So the person signed up as a gift, unless you paid for the person as a coach, if it's a coach, you can fire the coach and get another coach. <laughs> You would be great at this. So people should hire you. <laughs> I think you would be great at this. <laughs> should hire you. So, so if you've hired somebody and you're not feeling it, fire them. If they're your very good friend or sister, um, know that it's a gift and it's a gift that you're not really interested in receiving because it's kind of wasting your time. Right. Yeah. So you can very kindly thank them for the one round or the five rounds and then be done and if they're kind of hammering at you like hey let's do some more be like you know I'm really good and if you would like me to do this for you I can and if you're really dedicated to helping them and you think they can get there you can tweak it you know and help you tweak it with them and and maybe they're trying to be overly intuitive maybe they've taken on the role of healer a little too seriously because they're actually not the healer they're just the holder of the container <laughs> right yeah. so uh, so you can, you can try and help them get there, but uh, yeah, I wouldn't work that hard with somebody that didn't naturally embody the willingness to tap into their own compassion and feel that pain. Yeah. You know? And, and you saw, everybody saw me writing and doing it and, and being present. This works even better over the phone. Because I can be on the phone or whoever, your friend, your aunt, whoever, can be writing down Tony and then use, right? We can write down the key words that you want to repeat back without it tripping the person being healed. Right. And then with phone, it's just all audio. So you're all just present, right? So that, so it doesn't have to be in person. If you're looking for the right person, but they're in New York and you're in California, yay. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to type it out or zoom it out. You can just get on the phone. Yeah. 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 That's great. And I, I wanted to, I felt like putting my hand over my heart would have been more, uh, yeah. uh, I don't know the word, but more, um, intentional and more loving to connect that. So that would probably be a good tip for our listeners to do the hand over heart chakra. Yep. Yeah. And I think both of us could have done that and it would have impacted. So even at the, okay, everybody take a deep breath. Like that's, that's a great time to just keep it and hold it. I agree. Yeah. And even set the intention, right? Like set the intention before you do this exercise um, would, would be super beneficial um, to set the intention of the results that you want. And then another thing, Wendy, is that I know when you were asking me those questions, there's a lot of women, here's where I want you to chime in and let everybody know, it's hard for them to say, he used me or whatever it is for them, he cheated on me because emotions start to, to show up. So what advice do you have for somebody who can't even get to that step? Have Kleenex next to you. And you, <laughs> you know, it's... Emotions are hard and, and they're hard for, especially for those of us who aren't criers. I'm not, I'm not really a crier. If you can get me to cry, man, you've done something. So um, it's important to ask yourself the question, what's more important? Feeling this pain and having to confront the emotions or keeping my emotions at bay and still dragging this around. Really? The choice. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like we don't, we don't 
really realize the importance of our emotions because we, most of us have been taught to hide, don't cry, especially men, don't cry, right? You're, be a man, not a mouse type of thing. Um, and I know for me, because I cried steadily for 22 years, that when it was afterwards in the healing process, I was like, I don't want to cry. I don't want that emotion to come up because I'm tired. I'm tired of that emotion. So, but you have to feel it to heal it. You have to let that come up and out so it doesn't stay in and circulate. So it's really important to feel those emotions and to honor yourself that those emotions are coming up. Yeah, and we're so trapped in our culture around emotion. You know, if we show if we show tears, then that shows weakness, or if we show tears, that's too emotional. But then the other aspect is anger. Well, then, well, now we're just an angry woman, right? <laughs> There's all these weird labels that are negative attached to even mm-hmm. stoic. She's cold, right? She's so she's a stone. She's like a rock. That's also bad. So there's no win, right? Yeah. There's just no win here for us, says our culture. So do the thing that you need to do to help process this out for you. And maybe it's cry and maybe it's you're done crying. And maybe it's just finding a different place to look in your heart and in your, in your body to release Yeah, what's coming up for me is you're super emotional. I know I heard that a lot. You cry for everything, Denise. Um, And that's because I was in a toxic relationship. I was constantly being abused. So it was hurting me. So naturally, when you're hurt, you cry. It's a reaction. And yes, I did think of crying as a weakness, um, as, uh, you know, you're not strong enough for this. You can't get through this until I went through the healing process and then realized that my crying was a cleansing. It was a release. And so that's what I share with women. Like that's the way you should really look at when you cry instead of as I'm weak for me, I'm weak. I can't handle this. I'm not strong enough versus no, this is, this is a release. I'm letting whatever this is go and it's coming out in tears. Yeah. Yeah, because when you're in a relationship with a toxic person, they're famous for those types of lines. You're super emotional. Why do you cry over everything? (laughs) Why are you overreacting? Oh, yeah. Reacting. I am reacting to the thing that is happening. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good response for the thing that is going on. You asshole. (laughs) (laughs) So... Wendy, is this exercise your um, advice to getting unstuck when we feel stuck in these kind of relationships? Yeah, I think that uh, it's interesting because we stay stuck for all kinds of reasons, right? Mm -hmm. One of them, we don't know how to get out of it. Two, hope we get it, it hopes it, hope it gets better. And we also don't like the alternative, which is having to start all over and be single. And maybe the next one could even possibly be worse. Right? Yes. So so I think that there's a gentleness that we need to have with ourselves around, I don't want to say forgiveness because it's not even that, but that we just go through different cycles as being a person. You know, being a person on the planet, trying to find our way and learn things and techniques and how to do it better and be a helpful human and and all the things, right? So so there's these cycles that we go through and and oftentimes we want to, we have this pain, we're stuck in this pain, and then on top of that, we add shame or embarrassment to how we got there in the first place. Mm -hmm. And then that also keeps us really stuck instead of just really giving ourselves permission to be like, whoopsie daisy, that, so that happened. And now let's figure out how to get to the next cycle of my life, the next chapter. So good. I'm writing this down because it's so true of the, the shame and embarrassment of crap. Here I go again. Now it's another relationship that I know it's 
not working out. It's a, a repeated pattern from the past. Oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. Sometimes it's even being engaged. Now I got to call off the engagement or even being married. Here we go. Another divorce. I have women who've been married four times because of this pattern. And it, it is that embarrassment and that shame of what am I, what are people going to think of me? What do I, what do I tell them? And you feel like such a fool for going, doing this again, when you could simply do this amazing exercise with somebody who has a big heart um, and release that. There's also one more thing that I would like to add to that, which is there's this compulsion that we women have. And I want to share it because we all have it. And oftentimes women think they screwed up. But it's a compulsion that you have that we all have, mm -hmm. which is the compulsion to be pleasing or avoid displeasing other people. And it can show up in the most ridiculous ways. And one of the ways it shows up is, you know it's a bad idea, but there are 200 people in that room, so put the veil on and walk. Yeah, I just got chills. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because the pressure to, the pressure to avoid displeasing your soon-to-be husband and 200 people and God and the preacher is more intense than your own life, than what matters in your own life at that moment. So you're just going to yeah. take one for the team, take a deep breath and take one for the team and figure it out on the other end. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I am watching, people have told me for years to watch this and I just kept saying no because it felt like work. <laughs> But I started watching Married at First Sight, which is a really bad reality show about people getting married who had never met because four experts match make them together. Mm -hmm. And over and over, I see these women who see him and go, nope, he is not my guy. But they do it. They're like, and it's the pressure to avoid displeasing, even in the most ridiculous setup. Right. Marrying a complete stranger that you've yeah. never even seen before. And everybody would totally understand if you backed out of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Completely. Nobody would like, point oh. a finger. What a stupid idea this was. Whoops, sorry, I'm out the door. Like never in the very short two seasons I have watched has a woman done that. No wow. one at the altar has said no. Now they might have like edited out, you know, something happening, but it's, yeah. it's instinct. It's a compulsion that we have that we can sometimes move beyond, right? Sometimes we don't, we don't, we are displeasing. Sometimes we're like, nope, <laughs> nope, hold on. This isn't going to work out. Hold on, let me fix my scarf for everybody. All right, <laughs> so nope, hold on. This isn't going to work out. So sometimes we will disrupt that. But when we do that, when we disrupt our own instincts to not be pleasing, it is a victory of human spirit every time. We have just pushed past our own instincts to cause a victory. And that is really rare. I call it woman energy. Yes. One thing that when you were talking, Wendy, that, that came up was we, we as women think, well, it would get better when. So going back to the aisle, it'll get better after we get married. Right? And I know in my own experiences, well, if I just dress the way he wants me to, he won't act like that or dress the way he doesn't want me to or say the things that I know he wants me to, things will get better or the opposite. Maybe, maybe the sex will improve and become more frequent once we're married. <laughs> That's when the mind blowing sex happens. Yeah. <laughs> Not before. <Hi>. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So it's that, it's that people pleasing part of us that we tend to think like, well, when this, when I do this, it will get better. And like you said in the beginning, we're not responsible for the other person's behavior. You're only responsible for you and, and how you react to that behavior. So I think that's really important for the, for the viewers to know that it doesn't get better. It gets worse. It gets worse, whether it's that relationship or you leave that relationship and go into another relationship without doing the healing piece, 
it gets worse. The, the person shows up, the relationship, the circumstances in it, it all gets worse. It doesn't get better. I swear it's God or the universe or whatever you believe in going, oh yeah, you didn't, you're, you're unwilling to heal this and learn the lesson. All right, I'll serve it up bigger. <laughs> I'll do it. That's exactly it. Right. Yep. Lessons that we need to learn. Uh, it's so true. It is so true. Well, Wendy, I know you have a, an amazing gift for the audience. Would you share that with us? I do. I have about a 30 minute, it's video and audio, but if I were you, I'd just, if it were me getting this gift, I'd just download the audio and do it when I was like, on a walk or something. <laughs> be, be in nature, listen to the audio. Yeah. And it's a 30 minute setup for you on how to be in really great shape. And I don't mean like at the gym, I mean mentally and in your heart. How to be in really great shape to be single and happy and ready to date and ready to start that new chapter. Ooh. So you're looking at the things in your specific life that would set you up to be a really happy single person that can attract a good match for you. Yeah. So shift out of the old and into the new healed version of you so that you can, like Wendy and myself, find true love and, and, ha and experience that. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Wendy, for sharing your energy and your amazing message and doing that awesome exercise for everybody. It's been an honor to have you as a guest on the Heal Your Heart, Find True Love After Toxic Love and Be Happier Now virtual conference. And to you, the audience, thank you so much for being here and investing this time in healing your heart. You're so worth it. Take advantage of Wendy's beautiful gift and use this exercise over and over until you find the right person or hire the right coach or whatever it is for you. And um, so that you can heal that part of your life and, and have amazing love. Thank you so much. Thank you, Janice.